Well, 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 the turns have tabled. Now the mainstream media in different you know, levels of the mainstream media are actually turning on Justin Trudeau or liberal ideologies. We're taking a look at breakfast television, which is historically a bit more of a progressive television show here in Canada and how they aren't really on board with the soft on crime policies that Justin Trudeau and the Liberals have implemented. It's kind of interesting how things are turning. Everybody is progressive till they get punched in the faith. Mike Tyson. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I do want to encourage everyone to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already. It does really help grow the channel and help push videos out further so more people can be informed of what is actually happening here in Canada, as well as remind you that this is indeed the extra channel, so I may look familiar from other channels, but I'd super duper appreciate it if you guys showed this one the same love that you do the other ones. And if you want a matching sticker, like the one here on my microphone, Wacko Trudeau has to go. You can find the link for that down in the description or the pinned comment below. Without further ado, let's get into this video. You got Sid here who does a sound off as per the breakfast television, you know, how, how their show is structured. Canada is soft on criminals and Sid wants change. Huh? Welcome aboard, Sid. I love Canada. I was born here, raised here. I'm Canadian, proud of it. But the one part about our society that has bugged me for a very long time is this we are soft on crime like seriously soft on crime one of my biggest issues is the sentencing rule that for the majority of my adult life stopped judges from stacking sentences on convicted criminals for example if you're found guilty of five first degree murders you serve those sentences at the same time meaning you're eligible for parole after 25 years not 125 years when you add it all up but in 2011 that changed. Then Prime Minister Stephen Harper, in his fifth year in office, made a number of provisions in an effort to toughen up crime laws in this country. Part of that was giving judges the opportunity to institute consecutive life sentences before the possibility of parole. I liked that. Why, after a mass murder, should someone in this country be eligible for parole after 25 years? Does it make any sense? Why should people be allowed to unalive others and then be left out on bail and reintegrated back into society, Sid? It's much deeper than 25 years of parole. You got criminals that are taking over the streets, broski. Like, come on, man. This is because of Justin Trudeau and liberals. Maybe we're going to see him throw a bit of a tantrum the way I am about this. So let's, let's continue the video. Sorry, everybody. A sense. I know it doesn't for a lot of you watching out there. But a few people in this country in May of 2022 disagreed. Problem was they were sitting on the Supreme Court when they did it. All nine members voted to make consecutive sentences illegal following an appeal from Alexander Bissonnette, who was found guilty of six counts of first degree murder in the Quebec mosque shooting, pardon me, of 2017. Crown prosecutors initially floated the idea of 150 years before parole eligibility. But the Supreme Court stopped it, saying, and I'm not making this up, quote, life sentences without the chance of parole are both cruel and unconstitutional, end quote. Even if you killed six people and tried to kill six others, unconstitutional. I couldn't believe it. Others, specifically the families of victims, were gobsmacked. The key word in that ruling was unconstitutional. So how do you make it constitutional? Well, conservative leader and potential future prime minister, Pierre Polyev, yep, yep, yep. has an idea. The notwithstanding clause. It's a clause in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms that can override it if it's for the greater good. It's rarely been used provincially, never been used federally for anything. But last week, while speaking to the Canadian Police Association, Polyev hinted that when it comes to crime, he could go there. We're going to in re repeal that and it will be an automatic fait accompli that multiple murderers will stay in maximum security and by the way they will have consecutive not concurrent sentences multiple murders will only ever come out of jail in a box wow this is the difference between liberals 
and conservatives. The liberals, they want everybody to have unlimited chances. Absolutely, unless you criticize their government, right? The conservatives say, no, no, no. If you've actually gone through the steps of thinking about a crime, committing a crime, you should be penalized accordingly, depending on the severity of said crime. If you then... After have committed the crime and gone through, you know, rehabilitation, gone through the punishment, whatever it is, if you think about committing another crime and then complete said crime again and you repeat the crime, whether it's a different crime or whether it's the same crime, that is not okay and you should not be allowed to be a member of society. You're not following the rules. So get your ass in jail and you're going to stay there. And that's that. And then you you lock the door and you throw away the key. That's how you stop crime in a country that is being flooded with crime. You may not see it every day. You, I, I don't see it every day when I walk down my street, but I see it on the news. And it's not just fear mongering. It's liberal media news that is reporting on it, right? And then, when yeah, you, you can go certain parts of downtown. Maybe when the sun goes down, you start to see, you know, the cockroaches come out to play, whatever it is. But even in town that I live in, there's like over a homicide per month. It's got 75-ish thousand people living in it. That should not be happening, man. Crime is through the roof. People are left to steal because they can't afford things. People are desensitized for whatever reason, maybe because the punishments are almost non-existent to high, severe levels of crime that people are just doing it anyways. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I'm not for it, and we definitely need a change, and it's wild to see breakfast television. Sid actually be on board with this type of change. And all of my proposals are constitutional and we will make sure, we will make them constitutional uh, using whatever tools uh, the Constitution allows me to use to make them constitutional. I think you know exactly what I mean. Um, Whoa. So they will happen and they will stay in place. We know what you mean. The Prime Minister was quick to respond to that. Pierre Polyev just proposed to override the fundamental freedoms and protections of Canadians. Override the charter that is there to protect women, minorities, to us LGBTQI plus communities. That's not, That's not true at all. Responsible. Trying to find exit routes when talking about the charter of rights and freedoms in this country is not a conversation I like at all. But then I think about this. The Afsal family run down and killed by a murderous 20-year-old punk in London, Ontario in June of 2021. It was judged to be a terrorist act, but instead of 100 years before being parole eligible, he's up in 25. Mm. Incredible. Listen, I normally don't enjoy listening to any kind of argument regarding overriding the Supreme Courts with a notwithstanding clause. It's kind of dangerous most of the time. However, when it comes to giving the families of victims some peace, and keeping the worst criminals in Canadian history behind bars for the rest of their life, it's an argument I'm willing to listen to. Thank you for your time. Holy smokes, dude! This is the second video on this channel that I have made where you see the reporter, she said, live right now where he's actually being i don't want to say red pilled but he's realizing that Justin trudeau's policies are ruining canada this is i'm like i'm completely mind blown i'm completely mind blown because it's not just happening on breakfast television you're also seeing ctv reporters you're seeing ctv reporters they're not just providing softball questions to justin trudeau anymore they're asking the hard questions and also a, a video that i previously just recently posted on the extra channel on this channel was a reporter literally asking justin trudeau to his face why haven't you resigned i'm not talking about an alternative media source like rebel news or true north an accredited Right, and, and a, a, a fill or credit did according to the Canadian government standard reporter asking Justin Trudeau that you got mainstream pe mainstream people now that are turning on our prime minister because look, I've said it and I'll say it again. When it comes time to vote, people are not going to be voting based off of what looks good on paper anymore. Canada is almost in a state of an emergency. It's an unofficial state of emergency, if I do say so myself. If I'm allowed to even say that, okay. 
the cost of living is just insane. It doesn't make any sense. And it's going to get worse. The Bank of Canada said they're going to be increasing rates by up to 60% higher in the next few years. Wake up, people. You've got criminals that are going out into the streets doing crazy shit. The, the police are bringing them in. They're getting fingerprinted. Their mugshots taken. And then they're released on bail or on parole or whatever it is. Like almost immediately. Something has to happen. Or Canada could and inevitably on this path will collapse. I don't know what that looks like. I'm not advocating for revolution of any sorts. I'm saying we got to pay attention and we got to vote our way the hell out of this. We got to get our neighbors, our family, our friends involved in politics, get them involved in what's happening. You got mainstream media television host right here, breakfast television, Sid, who just, you just heard him say it. I didn't cut nothing. This wasn't edited or nothing. You heard him say that what's happening right now in Canada with crime is extremely radical and we need to do something about that. Pierre Poliev has offered a very good solution for crime and crime alone. And he's also offered some very good solutions for the housing crisis, among other things. And I really think that uh, more people, they just got to rally, not rally, but they got to get together with the idea of Trudeau and the liberals are not doing Canada any favors. They are really, really causing a lot of harm, not only to everybody right now, but to future generations. That's where we're going to end the video, folks. I would absolutely love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. On your way out, I would like to encourage you guys one last time to smash like button. Subscribe if you haven't yet already. It does really help grow the channel as well as turn post notifications on so you can be notified of upcoming videos. And if you want one of these stickers, Wacko Chodo has to go. You can find the link for that down in the description or the pinned comment below. Thank you for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.